Okay, this little video is about fats, one of my favourite things. Um, so, just a bit of a, an introduction. Fats, oils, lipids, triglycerides, We can use sort of interchangeably. So in some books you'll see them called fats, in some they'll call them fats or oils, in some they'll call them lipids and in some they'll call them triglycerides. You just need to be aware that they're talking about the same sort of molecule. So what you remember from GCSE is that um, fats are not polymers, they're macromolecules and they're macromolecules because they are made of a sort of a base unit of glycerol attached to three long hydrocarbon chains called fatty acids. Together we've got one, two, three fatty acids, triglycerides. There are of course monoglycerides with only one fatty acid and diglycerides with only two fatty acids attached and leaving some bonding free up here. So you need to know what the board is expecting you to know. They're expecting you to be able to draw glycerol which is really really easy. So we've got carbon, 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 OH, 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 and then all the other bonds in carbon are filled up with hydrogen. So I can see some of you watching it now and thinking, oh, hmm, that looks really like a triose, doesn't it? And it does because it's got three carbons and three oxygens. However, not a triose because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So it's got two more than you expect, a bit more hydrogen in it. So this is glycerol. Fatty acids you'll see drawn in various ways. It would be very tedious and time consuming to draw out the whole thing every time. So, all fatty acids have got a carboxylic acid group. Now I know this is backwards from how I drew it in the, um, in the proteins video. It really doesn't matter which way round you draw them. Um, so then, we've got a big long string of carbons. And carbons can form four bonds. So all of those would be filled with hydrogen and that could go on for a long time. That could be 30, 40 carbons long, all filled up with hydrogen. You will also see them drawn. And this is my favourite way. It's because this is a nice sort of, you know, it's a really easy way of drawing them. As a zigzag line, because when the carbons bond to each other, the bond angles just make a bit of a zigzag. That's my favourite. That's that to me demonstrates it's a really long molecule, and uh, the zigzag is just representing these hydrogens and carbons. Um, and sometimes you will see them drawn out with all of that replaced by R, meaning yeah, that's any length, and it's just carbon and hydrogen. So a bit like using the R group in the amino acids. So you'll see them written all those different ways fatty acids and that's the sort of basic structure. Now what you do need to know is that there are two sorts of fatty acids. So we've got, I'm just going to divide my paper into two, we've got ones where a fatty acid has got all single bonds. Again just representing that by a big long zigzag, uh, just the easiest way to do it. They're all the carbon to carbon bonds 
are single. Remembering that everything else is filled up or mm, saturated with hydrogen. So hydrogen is appearing everywhere where I've got a line. They are called saturated fatty acids. And these are commonly found in triglycerides made in animals. So these are sort of the animal fats, if you like. The other fatty acids are where not every carbon bond is filled with hydrogen. You might have one, in which case it's a monounsaturated acid, or more than one, a double bond. Even, perhaps, you could have triple bonded. So, if you've got more than one, they would be called polyunsaturates. Ones with only one double bond with monounsaturates. And, oh, just for your delight and delectation, if around a double bond the hydrogens are on either side of the molecule, it's called a trans fat. If you've got them both on the same side, it's called a cis fat. So these are fatty acids, but with double or triple bonds in. These are, so you've uh, got double or triple bonds. Between carbons, and these are unsaturated. Now these are very commonly when a plant makes a fat, it commonly makes a plant makes a fat, it commonly makes an unsaturated one. It uses unsaturates. So <clears throat> you also need to know how to join so the reactions that would join a fatty acid to glycerol. So again, we're talking condensation to make the fats and we're talking hydrolysis to break them down. So remembering, I'm not going to put all the hydrogens on, glycerol is like that. So it has three of these reactive OH groups. Our fatty acids also each have a reactive OH group. I'm just going to do my favourite zigzaggy thing. By the way, if you're doing a zigzag for an unsaturate, you just put some double bonds in it to show that they're double bonds. And condensation, removal of water, removal of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen. So we can take a water out there. We've still got two OH groups to go, so we can add a different fatty acid, I'll add an unsaturated one on this time. And again, we can take water out there. And we've still got a third one, so we can do it again. And obviously these fatty acids could be all the same or they could be different, making a simple or a mixed fat or triglyceride. So what will we be left with? What we're going to get at the end of all of that is we're going to get one, two, three water molecules. Let's put those in first. And then again, I'm going to work this side over. Uh, glycerol kind of back bone will be there. Each carbon is bonded to an oxygen. It's bonded now, taking that oxygen and hydroxyl away to a carbon, which has a double bond oxygen attached to it. And a zigzag line, put a double bond in. Same here, carbon, oxygen, to carbon, which is double bonded to an oxygen, 
and same here. There are a number of ways of remembering that bond. Uh, I like to call it a cocoa bond because it spells cocoa. cocoa. And this bond here, of course it has a name and it's a girl's name and it's an ester bond. So we've got one, two, three ester bonds here, two, three. And I like to remember that ester, the girl, likes cocoa. Really easy to remember. And of course our other product will be three waters. Now we'll see if we're going to hydrolyse it, we can hydrolyse each one of those ester bonds and return to glycerol and fatty acids. So remember that's a reversible reaction. So, differences between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So, if we've got a a triglyceride that's made with saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are solid at room temperature. So these tend to be uh, animal fats. So if you think about things like butter, if you keep it at room temperature, if it's in your butter dish on the top of your bread bin, like mine is, it will be solid at the temperature of the room and you have to warm it up to be able to spread it on your bread. Um, obviously our fat underneath our skin in our adipose tissue is, uh, is there for storage and it's not at room temperature, it's at your body temperature which is higher and so it's more of a a bit unpleasant to think about, but it's more of a sort of a sloppy liquid. Which is, oh, it's good because you can bend and you don't have to move like a Dalek, but you know, a bit unpleasant to think about. Plant fats are unsaturated and they tend to be liquid at room temperature. So if you're thinking, you know, Ooh, what have I got in my cupboard? Olive oil, sunflower oil, uh, rapeseed oil, peanut oil, they're all um, liquid at room temperature. And obviously in nature, nature doesn't have room temperatures, a lot of these things are in seeds, they're in the soil, they're at a lower temperature and they will be solid so you can eat a sunflower seed and it, you know, it's not liquid is it, you're crunching on it even though it's primary store. Uh, of energy is as fat. So why bother with fats? Fats are used for a number of things. They are used for energy storage and the great thing about fat is uh, as far as energy storage is concerned is that they store an awful lot more energy per gram than carbohydrates did. Uh, does partly because of its structure. If you think about all those hydrogens there, they're all the things that are going to turn to to water and feed into respiration. So it, when you put the fat in, all the hydrogen in in any compound turns to water. Um, so it releases a lot more metabolic water, and in the process, those bonds are releasing an awful lot more energy. In fact, it releases twice as much energy. Per gram. So that's really useful because if I had to carry around my entire energy storage as say glycogen I wouldn't be able to move because it would be so heavy just to get to have the energy store that I needed. With fat it's reasonably light and so therefore you can carry it around quite easily um, so gram for gram it's a bit lighter than carbohydrate as a store because it releases twice as much energy. Incidentally, sort of side effect of that, remember I said that all the hydrogen turned to water, we call that metabolic water because it's made in respiration, and fat will release metabolic water. Think about camels, you'll see in the adaptation song at school, you know, the hump on the back is full of fat, that's because it will release metabolic water. Um, 
for the camel to use as a supplementary water source. Um, think about animals that have plenty of fat, whales, dolphins, seals, all this blubber. So it's that provides, uh, they live in cold places mainly. You're talking about providing thermal insulation so that they don't lose as much heat. Uh, important to have the uh, thermal in there, it's not electrical insulation, it's thermal insulation. Uh, great for uh, buoyancy. So it also helps them to float in the water. And I did mention electrical insulation. In, and you'll do this uh, later on when you do component 3 next term. In the nervous system, it can provide electrical insulation. So it stops any ions uh, passing over the membrane. So there are just a, a few of the properties that fats have um, to uh, for their, for their functions and you should really be thinking about sort of structure to function. So these big long carbo you know, carbon hydrogen chains are going to release lots of energy and some metabolic water. So what else do you need to know about fats? You need to know a few related compounds. Um, so you need to know the impact on health. So as health goes, we've got, um, you will have all heard of cholesterol, always featuring on Benicol adverts. So cholesterol is a natural part of your metabolism. It's part of your cell membranes, it helps to regulate the fluidity of cell membranes and it gets transported from place to place in your bloodstream like everything else. There are two sorts of chemicals that transport cholesterol. There are LDLs, which stands for low density lipoproteins, and there are HDLs, which stands for high density lipoproteins. LDLs are what people call bad cholesterol, and HDLs are what people call good cholesterol. So the bad cholesterol, these are transporting molecules actually, so these are tending to deposit cholesterol for example on the linings of your arteries this causes narrowing and a lack of blood supply HDLs tend to remove cholesterol and therefore they are removing more cholesterol than they're depositing and that's why they're good, uh, or referred to as good. Uh, actually, the good news for all females is that females do tend to have a higher proportion of HDLs in their bloodstream. Uh, males tend to have a higher proportion of LDLs, so look after your heart and cholesterol. Okay, final bits and bobs. There are related compounds, so your steroid hormones that you will have heard of particularly with it being Olympic year. Uh, are related, closely related to fats. Waxes that are lovely and waterproof because all fats don't like water are also um, related, closely related to fats. They generally used in waterproofing the waxy cuticle, the wax on the outside of insects. The other group that you need to be aware of are the phospholipids. So phospholipids, so this is my glycerol back, right, backbone, have two fatty acid chains. And of course fatty acid chains are hydrophobic. They don't like water. They're just big long carbon hydrogen, hate it, float about on the top of it. And then Attached to, and I'm just going to abbreviate this into a P, really stands for sort of PO4 minus, is a little charged group called a phosphate group. 
So instead of our last um, bit of the glycerol, our last OH group forming a bond with another fatty acid, it forms it with a phosphate bond, with a phosphate group, it's called a, um, again it's an ester link, and of course this is a charged or polar part. Now polar parts do dissolve, as you remember, in water because water is a polar molecule. So this is referred to as hydrophilic. Now you need to be able to recognise this, perhaps compare it to our triglyceride by talking about the differences between them. And these are found, these phospholipids, you'll come across again. They're the major component of cell membranes and they have these very unique properties of being half sort of hydrophobic and a little bit hydrophilic at the top so dead exciting okay i think that's it